Hello, everyone. So my mother would point at my sister and very innocently say, if you want to marry the rich one, you marry her. Do not marry this one. She is the poor one. I have to show you this hand. The spiritual guru, when I was 13 years old, looked at my hand and said, she has a very short lifeline. And it's on tape. Oh, wait a minute. I just gave away my age. I meant it's on a memory stick. My aunt, very proudly, even till this day, introduces me to people by saying, look how tall she is. We wanted her to be Miss Universe. And my father, who is no longer here, in those rare moments that I would hear his pride, would say to people, she's a lawyer, you know. These expressions of love translated this way to me as a very young child. She is not smart, but cute. She needs to live fast because she doesn't have a lot of time. She needs someone to take care of her because she's not going to be a businesswoman. And remember, these were all said by people who genuinely loved me the most. People's expectations of who we should become defines most of us. It defined me for a really, really long time. And let me tell you how that played out. I graduated high school at 15. I had five degrees by the time I was 21. I speak five languages. I married the person who could take care of me and live this very fast life until I decided to become me. So let me introduce you to myself again. I am Sally Ann, and I am a teacher. When I am not everybody's expectation of who I should become, I'm extremely nerdy. I like to call myself an intellectual badass. <laughs> I get up each day and the first words out of my mouth is thank you for one more day and then I color it every interaction whether it's in life and work I am fully present because guess what regardless of the length of the line tomorrow is not promised to any of us and we forget that I also, I'm a pretty good businesswoman, if I may say so myself.
the expectations of who I'm, I am not is where I actually found my flame. I found me inside of that space. And thank goodness, at the age of 29, I was able to stop and figure out who I am and why am I here. Now it gets exciting. So does this happen easily? Is the, does the lightning hit you? Is the path clear and you just kind of know? No, none of that happens. But what does happen is I've realized that my quality of yeses increases by all the things I say no to in my life. So instead of having to-do lists, I have not to-do lists. Let me give you an example of some of the things on my not to-do list. So I am the average, mathematically, I told you I was nerdy, of the five people I spend the most time with. I am very conscious of who and what influences I allow into my space. And sometimes that means I cannot spend time or get influenced by the people I love the most. It's a choice that you have to make if you're going to honor, many of us, a path that only you can feel inside of you in terms of that flame. On my not to do list, after almost 10 years of practicing law, I am never, ever, ever again going to do anything involving a nine to five job, ever. In my not to do list, and I can tell you, I actually tried that doing that nine to five uh, job. And after six weeks, I physically got ill. When you're so aligned with your values, and who you should be in the world, your body screams at you. So that's on my not to do list. A third thing on my not to do list is I never do anything. Remember that thing about if you want to marry the rich daughter or the poor daughter? I would never do anything ever if financially it does not feel good. So if a dollar feels better than a million dollars, I will take the dollar. So who will I become because of all of this? So I've decided I'm a verb. I'm not a noun. It's a conscious choice we all have to make. A noun, many of us, and particularly, I'm going to speak to the women in the room, we are often a noun as somebody's daughter, mother, sister, and we forget we are just somebody. As a verb, it means I get to get up every day and decide how I'm going to paint that day. As a noun, I was a lawyer. As a verb, I'm an author. I published my first book four years ago. I had my Oprah moment. I have magazines that come out across the Caribbean and I swear every time they come up, I kind of hold it up and I kind of feel like Oprah. <laughs> I have a foundation. My foundation I created seven years ago, and we in the foundation, the entire team, we deliver soft human skills, which I will talk to you about very briefly soon. So far, 25,000 plus young people 
have gotten the benefit of financial literacy, communication, creativity in the school system in the Middle East and in the Caribbean. I have a tech company. Who would have thought? And who would I become has to do with this place. Exactly four years ago was the first time I came to your beautiful country, Brazil. I was actually here in Sao Paulo. I was here in this room. I was sitting where you were as a judge for social entrepreneurs up on this stage. The social entrepreneur who won the competition that day is that young man sitting over there in the room. At the time, I have to be really honest with you, four years ago, I probably had only ever downloaded a couple of apps. Okay, I just gave up my age again, I'm not a millennial. <laughs> and when I was invited to be the nominee to nominating judge, I immediately read five books, nerd, and I came and I was a good judge. And I learned everything about technology. And here, four years later, I have a tech team, an AI team, a data science team, and my app delivers 21st century human skills that cannot be automated to hundreds of thousands of people across the world. I am so in over my head, it is not funny. I get up every day, one foot brave and the other foot scared. And I take my ninja sword and I walk into my tech company. All of you here in this room, you're with a bracelet. Yes? I would like you, there is an engraving on this bracelet. And on that engraving, do you notice how it's very soft and subtle? And it says, become more human. What I do have to say to you being in technology is that most of us made a judgment about each other in this room based on our physical appearances, maybe by the purse we have, the computer we have, the phone we have, by the things that are loud. What we miss is this subtle. It's the common humanity and the human skills in every single one of us. So I will end on this note by saying the future of impact work is human. The future of impact work is the fire in every single one of you. The future of impact work is you. Thank you.